Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview on emerging biotechnology trends. Biotechnology products from developing countries are just beginning to enter the international market. Unless the national and international markets are favorable to these products, the benefits and opportunities of biotechnology will be hampered. Areas of great interest and comparative advantage for developing countries include agriculture, mining and industrial processing of raw materials. Some of the notable trends include developing countries becoming active participants in the new bioeconomy. Currently, biotechnology capabilities are concentrated in a few countries and that biotechnology remains a research-intensive field and that the field of biotechnology is projected to contribute significantly to the development of poor nations though the impact varies due to the scientific development strategies adopted by the governments. Extensive studies undertaken in agricultural biotechnology have shown some success in the interim for food self-sufficiency. An example is the Golden Rice Project Embedding Beta-Carotene. Against economies in transition, it is noted that developing countries that lack intensive research capabilities will need time for the technological revolution to consolidate. In fact, the extent to which developing countries become participants may depend on their ability to adapt, innovate and use biotechnology within their industries and local markets. Beyond the domestic and local context, it is envisioned that international regulatory regimes governing biotechnology may have to be realigned to help realize the usefulness and applicability from the innovations from developing economies. Let's take a quick look at the technological innovation trends seen for the past decade or so. We have biofuels development as an example in Brazil using sugarcane as bioethanol for the replacement of plant-derived products with petroleum derivatives for energy and chemical product generation. These new initiatives does open new avenues for increasing the use of renewable resources in the global economy though one might argue that edible crops could have been grown otherwise. Refocusing biofuels derivation from non-edible plant parts has been in the works. From the broader perspective, we can see that participation in the new bioeconomy will be uneven and limited to those countries that make the necessary investments and commitments in technological development. Given the impact of biotechnological advances on the industrial contribution of the bioeconomy, let's review the industrial biotechnology. We define industrial application of biotechnology, which is emerging as a spin-off from developments in the chemicals and pharma fields. Common applications include but not limited to the use of renewable raw materials biomass to replace raw material derived from fossil fuels or the use of biological systems such as cells or enzymes used as reagents or catalysts to replace conventional, non-biological methods. In fact, Prospecting for the controlled production of new and improved biological catalysts, which are more specific and selective than their non-biological counterparts and have been used in bioprocessing applications for some time now. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates. With that out of the way, let's continue the discussion. As the role of biocatalyst gain importance in bioprocessing applications, it is important to note their pros and cons and how we can best optimize them. Biocatalysts generate fewer byproducts and can start with relatively less purified feedstock as a beneficial pointer though biocatalysts are generally fragile and have low volumetric productivity. Gradual incremental technological innovations and new bioreactor designs is expected to help improve the industrial performance of biocatalysts in areas of specificity and efficacy. Prospecting for biological organisms of industrial value will increase as bioprocessing gains acceptance. As enzyme technology improves, Attention is shifting to other areas of bioprocessing by tapping the potential in the world's wealth of microbial life, key source of enzymes. For instance, the production of bioplastics that are biodegradable will be a key achievement milestone. In fact, 
Forced evolution and rational design will increasingly be used to discover new enzymes for industrial use and gene shuffling to optimize their bioprocessing activities is yet another viable strategy. The mining sector has been practicing bioleaching, a type of bioprocessing for some time, where bioleaching is seen as a more sustainable mining strategy. So what is bioleaching? Bioleaching is a natural process that helps in weathering of sulfid ores and have advantages of being less costly to build and cheaper and more environmentally friendly. Precious metals can be derived from bioleaching including nickel, copper and gold from mining activities. Our understanding of both mesophilic and thermophilic microorganisms and their applicability in bioleaching approaches can be further built up. Moving towards sustainable environmental care, many research organizations are involved in efforts focusing on identifying new organisms that are stable and reliable with efficient multiplication. It is hoped that advances in bioprocessing technologies can help to deploy microbial support towards dissolving toxic metals in mine waste discharge, reduction of mine acid generation, and to find better performing biofilters in metal extraction approaches. Apart from microbial-assisted bioprocessing, plants play an important role as well in the form of phytomining, and we have a separate video on phyto or plant-assisted environmental cleanup, which you might like to review as well. Growing importance of international partnerships and alliances meant that a winner-take-all scenario of the past might not be viable in today's context. Participation of developing countries in the bioeconomy provide a basis for the kinds of partnerships that are essential for a market inclusion model to function where commercialization of biotechnology products and services is typically led by the private sector. This meant that the importance of partnerships between the private and public sectors for technology access or licensing is evident for a thriving bioeconomy built on biotechnological collaborations. Let's take a quick reflection on plant biotechnological advances thus far. The role of plants in the biotechnology revolution has brought about benefits on food security, the provision of drugs and vaccines, fiber and derivatives of bioplastics. Biosensors and industry biocatalysts are also available with our incremental and progressive mastery of plant biotechnology. This field is still developing in poor countries with excellent growing conditions for tobacco, potatoes and corn, among others may become the future home for biofarming centers. Bioeconomies with the capacity to purify, produce and package these products for commercialization will be able to ride the technological wave successfully. In conclusion, our view towards accepting biotechnological benefits has to be that of flexibility, responsiveness and inclusiveness. This is where open forums and discussions on how to best proceed in. Different areas of cooperation is pertinent. Edible vaccines in my personal opinion has much greater growth potential and can revolutionize medical impact on humanity. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates.